All right, folks, Joe at Reds here. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to install a new fly line, okay? So make sure and subscribe to the videos uh, if you like what you're learning here today. So fly lines should be replaced every couple of years and we see a lot of anglers that don't change fly lines enough. Either the fly line gets old or they need a different fly line for a different job. Sometimes we wanna use a sinking line or we wanna use a floating line, but people are often intimidated by just changing it. It's, it's so easy, I'm gonna walk you through it. So first of all, let's assume you have some backing on your reel. This is a new reel we're about to send to a customer and we put the backing on nice and tight. It's firm, this is 30 pound backing. And one thing you wanna do when you change your, your fly line is make sure that your backing still has integrity. And if it's old, I would just recommend giving it a good tug, make sure it hasn't begun to decompose or rot or anything like that. When backing gets wet and dry and wet and dry over time, it can begin to deteriorate. Since this is nice new backing, we're good to go. And this is the way we do it at Reds because it works great, it's consistent, it's easy, and when we ship a reel out, it makes it really easy for you to change a fly line or install your own, so long as that fly line is one like a Scientific Anglers, a Rio, or a quality fly line that has a welded loop in the end. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna take and we're gonna make a large loop and double it over like so, okay? And the bigger the better, in my opinion, I like to have nice big loops on here. It makes everything easier. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a triple surgeon's loop. Okay, so we're gonna do three overhands. And in fact, on 30 pound, I'm just gonna do two overhands. The 30 pound is pretty, pretty big, and I'm just gonna close that up, and that knot is gonna be nice and neat. Now, we're not gonna stop there. I tend to find this just is a little bit easier to handle and tangles less if I move up a few inches and I do the same thing again. And so I'm going to do two of these knots back to back, okay? And you want to make sure that you keep it nice and even so that you don't get any excess slack or bunching between those knots. But now my loop, when I'm just handling it and I'm putting fly lines on, it tends to just stay straighter. It's easier to manage. Now down here, I've got just a little bit of a tag on this braid right here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to leave just a little, maybe, uh, an eighth or a quarter an inch out there. And sometimes when I'm fighting a fish, like this is a saltwater line, so no doubt about it, the fish is gonna be pulling out into the backing here. I can see that little tag oftentimes out there at 30 or 40 feet, and I know that I've gotten back to the end of my fly line. In the event the backing and the fly line are similar colors, often I can see that little tag. So what I have now is my loop is all set up, just like this right here, okay? And it's big enough that I can put my hand through there and you'll see why that matters here in just a moment. So you've received your new fly line. Uh, it's in a box like this from Red's Fly Shop. We shipped it fast, it got there in just a couple of days. Now you're ready to install a nice fresh line and have the right tool for the job. Now, I kind of like what Scientific Anglers has done here. They've actually um, started to put their fly lines on these uh, cardboard um, these cardboard inserts so that you don't, we're not making too much plastic. I think that's, that's kind of cool that they do that. There's gonna be some twisties that we're gonna take off of here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make absolutely certain that we pull out the end that goes to the reel, like so, there's a little sticker on there, okay? So fly lines have a, a shape or a taper to them, so it's critical that this end that's marked with a little sticker goes down here, and that we pull it straight off of the spool without creating any tangles or anything like that. So I'm gonna pull my other twisty off, and now I'm just gonna set this aside for just a moment, and I'm gonna go ahead and slide that sticker off, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and marry these together, and I want you to pay attention to how we do this because there's two different ways to do it, and I want you to do it the right way. I'm gonna take the, the, the loop I've created in my backing of my braid here, and I'm gonna put that into the center of the welded loop. There's a nice strong welded loop on there, it's very sleek. It's gonna slide through my eyelets well when a fish is taking out line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole line through the other center of that, and I'm gonna marry these up nice and neat, and it makes a nice symmetrical connection, just like that right there. And it's nice and smooth. And at Reds, we find that leaving that little tag on there, putting two knots in there, and thickening this up with a nice, uh, nice big loop. It just tends to slide smooth out the eyelets and that connection can run nice and smooth through the eyelets. There are several different ways to attach your fly line to backing, but if you're buying a new fly line, that is certainly the easiest. 
Now that we've done that, we're gonna wind this line on to this reel as the next step. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and reel the line on. At, at the shop, we often do this with the machine, but you don't need to. These lines are 100 feet long approximately, and we can easily just reel them on. Some people like to attach this to the, the bottom section of their rod. I've done about two million of these, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hold it right here in my hand. And this one, we happen to be setting up left-hand retrieve. Reels can be spooled to reel with your right hand or your left hand, but it requires you spooling the backing on in the appropriate direction, and oftentimes, uh, changing the internal settings on the drag system of the reel. But since this one is left-hand retrieve, it's already set up to reel left-hand retrieve. It's a really simple one. And um, if, you're, if you're new to fly fishing and you're watching this, line always comes off the bottom of the reel when fishing, okay? That and the reel is always on the bottom of the rod. Do never let me see you reel a fly reel with the reel on top, okay? Ever. That's just something you don't do. So I'm gonna go ahead and reel this. Uh, there we've just installed the new fly line and uh, we have our our spool nice and full here you can see there's not a lot of gap and there's just just enough clearance there on the bottom you can see it's almost making contact but we want to make sure that our fly line isn't rubbing tight uh, on the bottom of the reel so we've we've uh, paired that up nicely it looks like the right amount of backing was already on here the fly line fills it up nice but it's very easy for you to put your own fly line on change fly lines we even do this in the boat sometimes or stream side if we need to change from like a sinking line to a floating line or change uh, the type of line that we're using for the job. So anyway, thanks for watching again. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, and then any questions you have about this, just put them in the comments and I usually get to those every couple of days.